Hey guys, it's Derica with Derica's Designs and today we're going to make this adorable little ballerina princess pattern. <laughs> this is a sewn pattern so you will need your sewing machine but she comes with arms, the body, the head, and we've made some cute little wings to attach behind her. You won't want to miss this one. Guys, we're back and boy do we have a project today. This is our little fairy princess, sugar plum fairy, whatever you want to call it. I don't really have a name for her. She's just the fairy is what I'm going to call her. Um, it is so and it is no so. Um, but yes, it definitely incorporates both and it's important to do both. I don't know what I have going on over here. There we go. So, um, I have, oh my gosh, it, it, this is a big project. Okay. It, it's going to take a while, but I feel like it's one of those projects that you can easily make multiples of. Um, the, this, of course, this is pink. It's all pink. Oh my goodness, you could incorporate any color. You could do purple, lavender, um, the light blue, or the, even the aqua. You just, you could do whatever. This is um, pink tool. I buy the I bought the, the 12 inch roll. It's not the little short six inch one. It's the 12 inch. It's just easier to work with. Um, and then of course there's a lot to change. Like there's a lot of things about her face that I would love to change. I just, until I make a new one, um, I don't have a template really to go by. So we're just going to go with this face for the minute. And then when we make the new one here, maybe I'll change things up a little bit. Um, these eyelashes are the doll eyelashes, but I kind of feel like maybe she would be better with the human like Dollar Tree style eye eyelashes. These are just very, very large. It looks like when people get the eyelash extensions too long, like they're really long. <laughs> so I don't know though. See, those are the things you can change. When you make this, you can change it however you want it. Um, I'm not thrilled about the nose and the mouth, obviously. Um, this is actually the first one I did. I did another one that's that I think looks better than this one. But um, I'm just, I'm like literally starting over here. So I just want to get all this made and then show you. Now this, this bodice is foam board. It's a no-sew. But we glue our legs in there. So, you know, they, it's easy. When I sewed this, she became very cylindrical. I wanted more flat and broad. So I incorporated the foam board instead of sewing this. The initial pattern, she was sewn. But basically all you would see is this front. You wouldn't have this nice flat area to show like her shoulders and the width of her waist, you know how her waist kind of cuts in here to her small waist right here. That's the look I wanted, but when I sewed it, it was just a giant cylinder. It just didn't look right. So um, that's why I changed that. Because once you stuff, especially satin, it just takes on a whole shape of its own. So anyway, um, the little wings are just poster board. Make sure you have poster board available. I didn't put it on foam board. I wanted them to be a little bit flexible, especially when you ship them. I didn't want them to possibly break or crease. So since they're flexible, you can attach them to the back of this foam board and it pretty much will hold those wings out. Like I could glue this wing to the foam board back here on the back of this. It's going to hold it up and just it's, all it's going to do is allow a little bit of play like this. So when it goes into a wreath, um, it's not going to break. It's not so stiff. Um, I was trying to stay away from um, anything like super stiff that could break easily. Cause I know shipping is an issue with no sew attachments. Um, a lot of times they break, they fall apart. Pieces come off, um, because of the shipping process. Let me see if I can put these over here. But I knew you guys would love this princess. I don't know what I'm touching. Something is sticky. Like, I guess I just have something on my fingers, you know? Okay. Okay, so, it, ah, sorry. 
My lights are doing their own thing right now. All righty. Come on. Okay, so you need just all the fabrics, all the things. Um, <laughs> the whole list that is that was given, you need all of it. There's a lot to sew in this one too. So we're going to do all the sewing first, and then we will um, move over to the no-sew stuff because it's just really it's quite a bit. So these are the arms right here. That has a huge... Should, see, when you get fabric and it has a huge crease in it like that, um, especially felt, um, do yourself a favor and buy a little steamer. Um, we have a huge garment steamer and I love it. It is, you know, big. We can do large sheets, but they make a little mini steamer. It's about the size of a coffee mug. And you can just plug that thing in within 10 seconds. It's steaming. You just go over that crease and that crease is gone, right? So um, using fabrics and stuff, hopefully you have a steamer because it's really kind of important. So these are the ballerina legs. I'm going to go ahead and pin these. Um, I, they're a little extra long because they have to be tucked up in behind the foam board and glued. So I made them a little extra long. And of course, she's a ballerina, so you want long skinny legs. And this is part of the head. These are part of the feet. I'm just going through all the stuff. There's so many pieces. This is the back of the head. It's this also can be steamed. I, which, you know, once I make it, I'll, I can steam it. But this is a plush fleece. It's called. It's actually um, very flat on one side and kind of slippery. And on this side, it just has the slightest bit of plush to it. It's not really thick. It's not like blanket fleece, but it's called plush fleece. And um, it comes in several different colors. And I just like it because it makes, it doesn't stretch a lot. It stretches a little, but not a lot. But it just makes for a cute little bun on top of her head. Um, this was the old fairy pattern that I used to use all the time. This head is the same one. And the only thing I changed up was the legs. And those are the same arms too. So there's a lot of things that I, I kept. So... <clears throat> So the arms, very simple, just so we'll stuff, we'll put wire in, you know, same old, same old. Oops. make sure I didn't create any issues. Now this, um, this is a Kona fabric. It's called, the brand I guess is Kona. It frays really easily. Um, so I can see there's a spot right here. It's not right on the edge, but it's close. And because I know this fabric will fray, I'm just gonna reinforce this little edge of this arm. Because when I stick the um, forceps and the, um, polyfill and stuff in here. I don't want it to bust out that seam and then have to start all over with it again. So I might as well reinforce it now before I... And of course, guys, as always, you can always use pins to pin everything together. One of these days, I will pin something. I promise. I just, I just don't. Sometimes I do, but I mean, I never think about it. But I always think I could eliminate that problem if I just pinned them together. But... Okay, check this side. All right, got a little spot right there. know if you guys can hear the screaming in the background but that is Katie throwing a Katie tantrum so not really sure why but you know we, I just she just I just let her do her thing just just scream girl just scream okay so now we are going to do a leg we'll save those okay so we need to put the slipper on the leg 
we have the back piece and we have a toe okay so now we need to sew these right sides together right so rather than sew these two pieces on individually i'm going to put them all together and sandwich them so we can do it we just have to sew it one time so this is going to be the back of the leg now this this part this slipper part is made slice bit bigger than the actual pattern and that's because satin also frays very badly so it's better to use a little extra satin whenever you're cutting or sewing with satin give yourself at least half an inch of an inseam not the usual quarter of an inch satin is just really difficult okay um, okay so i'm going to put in one pin right there just like that and we're going to do the same thing of course you know satin has a shiny side and a not shiny side and we're going to put it on this toe here oh fell apart on me hold on basically we're going to line it up with the other one right, it's not wanting to satin is so hard to work with it doesn't want to stay so we're gonna have to throw a pin in here just stay i think i told you guys before this this um pattern this fairy basically uses every fabric, every, I, everything that I despise the most to work with. It's in this, it's in this pattern right here. <laughs> this stuff, when you cut it, it's going to, it's, it sheds everywhere. Make sure when you cut your plush fleece, you do it over a trash can and you shake that thing out really good. It's everywhere. Then we're using feather boas again, everywhere. Then we're using satin, which is miserable. We all know that. And then we're using tulle, which is like, oh my God. So there are struggles with this pattern. There are struggles, okay? So you just have to be patient with all the different types of fabrics and things that you're using. want to check this one mostly because my when I cut these out it wasn't a perfect straight line so I know I'm gonna have a few places that might be and I you know on this one I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce the foot anyway it looks okay I didn't go over anywhere but because I'm going to have to flip this around and stuff it pretty tightly I'm just gonna go ahead I just don't want that um, that satin or this Kona fabric spraying and making a hole. So I'm going right on the same stitch line I used before and just going around just to give myself a little more confidence in that one. I'm going to cut off some of this excess because you want this toe to really um, be, you know, pointed down like a ballerina toe. Okay, so when we get down here, or when we flip this around, we're going to have to make sure that the toe goes on one side and then the back of the shoe goes on the other side, okay? Now, I will do this. Um, well, I really can't do it. Never mind. I was going to say I would sew it on first and then show you, but really it doesn't look right if you sew it on to the, the legs first. It looks better when you do it this way. It's just, you know. Got to be careful with it. So, I'm doing it by hand, a little bit by little bit. Okay, so I'm to the foot. Now, this is this would be the back of the slipper, so I want to make sure that stays on the right side. And then there's the toes up here somewhere, the front of the slipper. And is that it? So I'm just kind of reaching my fingers in and you see automatically um, 
when I pull it through, the satin piece is on the back of the shoe. It's like the back of the shoe, basically. And if you flip it over, your toe piece is right here. Bad thing about satin, it definitely frays all the time. So this one frayed on me and I'm a little annoyed at it right now. But do you see how by sandwiching the four layers together, we basically made, that would be the, the toe, the very tip toe of the shoe. I'm gonna have to put some trim right here. If you can see right there, it frayed on me. I don't like that. So I'm gonna glue some of that um, uh, sequin trim on that toe right there. But the back, after I get this stuffed, I'm just gonna glue this edge down. Um, the back of the shoe really isn't that important. The reason I put the back of the slipper on there was if you're going to do a bent, um, you know, ballerinas, you know how they stand with one leg bent, it, the back of the leg, the shoe shows a little bit, and I didn't want it to be plain. So it's, just, it's literally just an extra. So let's do another one of those, um, and I'll show you, I'll walk you through it again, because I know it's a little confusing. So we have our legs pinned together, one leg, right? This is the ballerina toe right here. You open it up, it doesn't matter which side, it's exactly the same. So I'm going to first put the back, and you can tell by the pattern, this part is the toe, right? And this is the back of the leg here. Look for your shiny part, and your shiny parts need to touch because you want the right sides together. So you want the shiny part of the toe and the shiny part of the back of the foot to be touching so that when you flip it around, both shiny points parts are on the outside. So, place that on there. And where's the shiny part? That one, oops. And we'll place the toe on there. Once I get them right where I want them, this one went easier. I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna put another pin in it right here to keep all four layers. Now we have two layers of Kona flesh color and the back of the shoe and the toe of the shoe. So that's four full layers. And I'm gonna pull this over a little. So there we go. Okay, so that's what we're gonna sew. And we're just gonna make a giant U, okay? Not gonna do anything. And then I will go back and reinforce the foot again just because, just for my own. check it really good um, make sure we won't have any issues the leg looks good actually the, the foot looks good but I'm still gonna reinforce it just because trim off a little bit of the excess. I don't want it bunching up around the toe. I want the toe to be able to be at a nice point. So this extra, I want to cut it off. I don't know. If it's so thin. It may not make a difference, but I'm going to cut it off anyway. Okay. So now the same thing, we're just gonna flip this around really, you know, with our fingers. Um, I wouldn't recommend using any kind of tools. You just wanna push it through. That way when you get down to the foot part, you can make sure that the foot goes, the back of the foot goes to the back and the toe goes to the front. Okay, so there is that so to the right on this right side that's the back of the shoe and then we'll just keep pulling it out and we keep pushing that over to the right and then once we oh, and then I can see the toe part here but I want to make sure it's going to go to the left Let me get my fingers in there and pull it out there we go and then use a dowel to just kind of point your little toe out kind of push push it out make it look 
There we go. It'll look better once you stuff it. Again, this, this part frayed just a little bit. So because I'm going to put it on that foot, I'm going to go ahead and put the sequins on this foot too, obviously. I might even do it on the back of this. We'll see. We'll, we'll see once we get it stuffed how bad it gets. All right. So those are our little ballerina legs and toes. And they look, they do look cute. I mean, the little slipper, all you need is the toe of the slipper because then we're going to crisscross ribbon here and then it will look like a little ballerina leg. Okay. So now the head. All right. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to sew, this is the front of the hair, but we're going to sew it to this piece of Kona. Uh, for the fl the flesh colored is the Kona. I say I say that just because that's the brand, but it's the flesh colored. And guys, you can there are there are so many shades of this flesh colored fabric. You can get any shade you want. When I made fairies before, we had Asian, we had African American, we had um, like Irish redheads with freckles. You know, I mean, we had all of the colors because you could find you can find the hair in all the different colors: black, brown red, orange, yellow, and then you could find the Kona, any skin tone that you want. So if your little girl wants a princess that looks like her, you can do it. Okay. okay you know what? I'm going to actually, I'm going to sew all this together. I'm not going to sew this to it because it's actually fitting really good. Now this part up here by the face, we are going to glue that down after we stuff it. Um, the one great thing about this fabric, especially if you have a good pair of really sharp scissors, is it does not leave any kind of edge, like rough edge. It's very smooth. So when you're cutting out this particular piece of this foam or this fleece, I mean, make sure just on this face part that you are doing it very clean and make sure there's no like weird cuts, weird edges kind of thing, because um, it will... We're just going to glue. I don't want to sew over that because that will look silly. So we want to just glue it down. Okay. So now we're going to put this. Now this plush fleece is going to, it's going to do this on itself. So you're going to set it in one spot and it's going to suddenly push itself into another spot. It can be a little frustrating. So for this, you definitely want to pin, 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 pin. Any kind of velvet, when you put right sides together, is going to work its work against itself or a velvety type fabric, I should say. Oh, it gets frustrating, especially when you're sewing. You can have it under here and be sewing along and not realize that everything is shifting and working against itself. And next thing you know, you have um, everything's crooked and you got to take it all out. So, okay. Now, where is she? I like, okay, back when I first started making attachments, guys, I used to leave a hole down here, like in the spiders and stuff. And then you would fill that hole and then you would kind of close it up and glue it together. And you, but you would always have this weird, straight, maybe kind of crooked, kind of bumpy thing right here. And I hate it. Um, for years, I'm like, there's got to be a better way. You know, we can't have this weird spot right here. If you have one of my first round of spiders from, you know, 2018, you probably can look and see where the, the spot that I left open so I could stuff it and then just hot glued closed. And it probably looks terrible, right? It just does. So what I've started doing, especially like with the bunny butts and stuff, is we cut a hole back here. We create this little, this is a, one of those butterfly tabs, right? Um, when you fold up the fabric and sew down the middle, it looks like a little butterfly. Like it's got two little wings there. Okay. That's the only reason, reason it's called that. But then I hot glue this piece to cover that hole. So what that does, not only does it give a spot for people to use to attach it, which is needed, it keeps the roundness of the face or whatever item. So whatever you're making a round attachment that you're going to stuff, like something that is sewn, try not to leave a hole. Put the hole in the back and cover it with a butterfly. 
up to, to make the butterfly, this is all you need. A strip of whatever coordinating fabric and then the base piece that you're gonna glue down to cover up that hole. And to make the butterfly, you just fold it in thirds. Fold it in thirds, oops. And then you will put it, I'll just do it so I have it in my hand. Fold it in thirds, make sure um, you've got all, the all three layers. Place it in the center of that. And just sew back and forth over it three or four times. So now it's basically you just created a patch with attachers. So your, your wreath friend that is going to use this attachment can attach the head using this. Okay, so we're not going to create a hole in it now. We're not going to do it until we're done and then we'll cut a hole, you know, wherever we want it. Uh, well, actually, we'll have to cut it to pull it right side out. Never mind. So I will cut a hole right here when after we're done sewing it. And we'll use that hole to turn it right side out. That's where I was getting at. Okay, so let's get this sewn. <laughs> already sliding on me. This is not an easy fabric to work with. Oh, yeah, it slid. I'm, it's literally a quarter of an inch. You can't see it probably, but you, the yellow part, it has slid over this way towards me. And over here, you can see you have a quarter of an inch that's not covered by the top of hair. And then over here, it slid this way, even though I had it pinned, guys. So I'm telling you, this fabric, mm, it works against itself. I guess I need more pins or something. I don't know. But it's going to have me cussing here, so... So that was not great. So you can see here. See, even though I had it pinned, it slid all the way over. If you look at this side, it's hanging off over. It's just, it's just a mess. So I will re probably reinforce this entire thing because now that I know it slid, we definitely have a hole right here that needs to be repaired. And over here, it's so far to the edge, it's just going to fray when I go to swap it, swap it around. I'm telling you. This not my favorite fabrics, let me tell you. This is a struggle. I am definitely on the struggle bus with this girl. But people love them. They want them all the time, and I, I'm like, oh, I hate making them. <laughs> going over and reinforcing existing stitches. I repaired the little hole up here. I kind of double stitched this little area that was really close that I knew would create a hole, but this side doesn't need it because it's way over there. It was this side that was the problem, but now that I have double stitched it, I shouldn't have a problem anywhere. Okay, so now we're just going to take this. And we're just going to cut a hole in the back of the head. It doesn't have to be huge. It's like, that's one inch, literally one inch of a hole. And just get your fingertips, push it through, and just slowly start, oops, working. Flip it around. Don't make the hole much bigger than one inch. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a little extra time to try to stuff it with a polyfill. But if your hole gets too big, this won't cover it. So just be mindful of that. Now, if your hole does get big, then cut another piece of this bigger in order to cover that. Um, make sure, just make sure it's covered. I'm just using the dowel to kind of push out the area. So 
basically this is the back of the head and it's basically all hair right it's just it was just easier to do this than it was to make the front and the back you know both um all you know i don't know it just it just seemed easier to me she comes out just as cute with her cute little face so it's just uh, trimmed in the yellow okay so now what we're going to do is use that same little hole and fill it up Oh. All right, and this just gotta be patient with it. Now, let me tell you, I have been, I have things like fairies and um, princesses and angels, and because think about it, typically for the most part, most wreaths are requested and made by women, and women love fairies and <laughs> princesses. <laughs> And, uh, so, and angels, of course, um, it's just a cultural thing. They just like that stuff. I mean, there's, there's some women I'm sure who want like a GI Joe kind of wreath. That's fine too. But let me tell you, fairies, um, if you have it in your budget to buy enough fabric to make, you know, three or four of these in whatever color schemes that you want or do them in different colors, and um, that aqua ice blue, like the Elsa kind of blue, very popular. So don't call her Elsa. No, don't, don't list her as Elsa, but you can use those, that color scheme for sure. That's the kind of the winter wonderland blues and silvers and all of that. You can even make her hair, um, like light blue instead of yellow. Um, there's just try any combination. And like I said, people, if you, if some, if somebody has grandkids, and they want one for each granddaughter, I should say, then by all means, you know, make sure you have or you can access all the different colors of hair because they're going to want to customize it, which is how I ended up with all the different colors um, when I was doing the fairies years ago. Uh, they just, they want to, they want to be able to make their granddaughter a wreath. I don't know if granddaughters love wreaths. I don't understand that, but people want their grandchildren to have a wreath. Not so much the boys, but the girls. So, um, you can call her. I, okay, when you guys are listing this also on Etsy, do not call this a sugar plum fairy. Okay, you are like hitting the copyright trademark thing there. Just fairy, okay? Fairy princess. Don't put Elsa in there. Don't put any, just fairy princess. I think you can encompass all the things you need just by calling it a fairy princess, but do not put sugar plum fairy. Um, do not put a um, nutcracker, believe it or not, has become so it's kind of like Santa Claus, but you cannot do like the nutcracker prince. So then you fall into copyright, you know, like that mouse thing. Um, that's why I'm hesitant to do a mouse in a nutcracker outfit because that is copyrighted. That is not something that I would do. If I did a mouse, it would just be like a little field mouse, you know, a little, little Christmas mouse. But it wouldn't be like the Nutcracker Prince or King or whatever the heck it was called, Nutcracker King. She's got to be careful with that. In words, I mean, trademarks are on um, words and uh, phrases. So you got to be careful. Copyright is on an image but trademark is on words and phrases. And there are words and phrases that are trademarked. And it's just as dangerous to use those as it is the actual image. So I know, um, you know, I don't know, I can't even try to think of, I don't know anything about the swan princess. Yeah, definitely don't put swan princess. Ballerina, princess, fairy, something, perfect. Those are all generic words, especially when they're put together, they don't mean anything. But um, try to stay away from anything that is popular in a Christmas movie. So now I'm going to glue. I'm going to go right to the edge. Ooh, dang it, I already messed that one up. I'm just, I'm just going to smooth this down. And I'm just going to glue right on the very edge. If you can hear her, Katie is still in there throwing a temper tantrum. That girl can go. Man, she's got lungs. So we're just putting the lightest, lightest little line of glue just to hold that down. And if you be very mindful, if you draw this out with pen or pencil and then cut it, when you're doing this front part here, 
make sure you're cutting where the pencil or pen is not visible. Like, um, there's a little spot right here up in this corner. I can just barely see it, the very touch of the pen I used when I traced out the pattern. And it's not enough to make me, my eyes go crazy, but it's, it's definitely there. So make sure you're cutting it. Nobody wants to see your trace lines or your pattern lines, okay? So make sure you take care of that. Okay, so now we're gonna stuff Diz. There's so many components to this little doll. I just, I don't really, honestly, don't even know where to start half the time. I feel like I'm, um, I could pick up any piece and just start making it. There's so many things that go into making her. So I'm just stuffing the little legs. They're very long, so I have it down here where you guys can't see it. Um, mostly because I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to hurt that toe anymore, but you really got to push the polyfill in that toe. You don't want these feet to be floppy. You want them to be firm, like about the same with the whole leg. You want it to be firm. Think of a ballerina standing on her toe. Okay. Like that. And we add the ribbon to it. You'll see. It looks more like a ballerina foot. And now that it, now I can decide if I want to just glue this down to cut it or to put, um, see that's what the back of the slipper would look like. And that's the front of the slipper. The back of the slipper is not that important. Now that I'm looking at it, I could have, I didn't have, to, Otis, hold on. Psst, hey, sorry, my cat. <laughs> he uses my shipping boxes as uh, scratching pads. <laughs> and he just has, he's ruined the edges on some of them, but I still use them. I just, when I tape it up, you can see it looks like a bear got to it or something. <laughs> okay. So see how we want it to be really firm. We're going to add um, wire to this. Now you're going to need a good like 17 gauge wire, maybe even a 16. Um, those little green uh, floral wires, the 18 and 20 gauge will not hold this leg into place. If you wanted See, like, if you want to, what do they, they do? That? I don't know. I'd have to look. <laughs> what does it see? Okay. Now, so you have one leg flat, and then you have one leg doing the toe touch thing. I don't know. I'm not a ballerina person, but if that's the way you want it, then you need to have a good solid wire in there, or it will not hold. So don't even try with those green things. None of them are strong enough to hold you know 17 and i maybe even a 16 16 would probably be better now don't fill all the way up i'm going to stop about two inches because this is the part we're going to glue it after we put the wire in it and then we're going to keep it flat and this is what's going to get glued under the board between the body and the the backing okay so that the leg just comes out like this okay Get these stuffed. And you can see I'm not using the dowels um, because I don't I don't want to risk it like pushing through. Um, I did double reinforce them, but it's still just always on my mind that it could push through and create a hole. And then you have you have to start over I, on something like this. I wouldn't even try to patch it. it you would have to start over. <laughs> Just one leg though, you know, but you'd have to go and cut all the stuff and make another leg. And um, these legs are too delicate that you can't really hide anything with trim, you know? And if you hot glue a, a seam, it's gonna be, it's gonna stand out. It's gonna be so noticeable. Some things you can hide, some things you cannot. Okay, same thing. We're going to stop about two inches up, just like that. And I will do the arms really quick. The arms, you know, you could do these arms and place them up over her head like a ballerina would. I kind of feel like they need to be a little bit longer, but that would be a little awkward too. So I don't know. I, initially, when I made this, I started, I hooked the arms onto the body facing upward like this. 
it was so awkward looking. Um, you went from having a princess to about, I don't know, I would have to put it in a wreath to see how, if you, the arms are too long. I mean, literally the arms have to be as long as the legs. It was weird. Um, so I opted to just use my other arms that I had that are, they're still curved. And if you have the right wreath or if you reinforce that hole in the middle or use a unique in the creek style board where you have some support, you can put these up above or at least kind of up here somehow to make it look like she's, you know, doing the ballerina spin thing. But I feel like they need to be longer though. So make a pair and if it just doesn't look right, then literally on the pattern, just make it longer. You still want it curved. They still need to be curved to, you know, do the ballerina touch up there. I just feel like you need to just elongate them just a little bit. I don't, know, I don't have a wreath or anything that I can put it in to kind of see, but because of the length of them they are right now, you, you need to, if you're using a regular work form, you might need to put some reinforcement back there, like some crisscross wires over the hole so that you can attach things to it. Now remember, when you're doing a character wreath attachment, you don't have to leave that hole in the center. So you can actually just do run a few pieces of wire, like, like make a tic-tac-toe like crisscross with some wire or something so that you have a place to attach all the different pieces. Um, don't On a character wreath, you don't have to have that hole in the middle of your wreath. On a floral wreath, it's really important, but on a character wreath, it is not. So, all right, let's see what else we have in our box. This is body. 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 Okay, so we're done sewing. I didn't want to put the sewing machine up until I was sure we were done. All right, so we're going to put this up really quick. Give me a second just to do this and get this out of the way. No matter where I put this, it's going to fall. It does it every time. And get my glue gun over here because Lord knows we'd be needing some glue gun. If you know me, you know. Get that glue gun. Turn this off. Slide that over. I'm going to put the cover on that tonight. Okay. All right, my mess is cleaned up here. So now we can use the whole thing without that sewing machine in the way. Okay, so I'm just randomly grabbing stuff. Now I'm gonna go ahead, now that we have our hot glue gun over here, I'm going to glue this. It's plenty big to cover that right there. And it blends in because of the yellow, but it also gives your wreath maker a place to attach the head. So. You might think, oh, that's ugly back there, but honestly, who the heck's gonna look? Your wreath maker will appreciate it, because if she doesn't have this, then she'll probably have to stick a piece of wire through it. So, um, or some people just glue it directly in. So having this little butterfly back here made with the fabric that basically coordinates back here. I mean, really, if you wouldn't even notice that unless you like went back there and looked for it. So we'll set that over there. All these things, man. This is our little bodice. If you notice, it looks very similar to our witch that we made earlier this year. I need this. I don't know if you can see it, but I can see it. But this thing is, this, this cut over here is just completely wonky. I'm just going to... Give it a little trim. It did not look like a straight line. Normally I would have a, a, a ruler, a flat edge. I don't have one back here, so we just, we're just going to wing it, but it already looks 10 times better. Okay, so here we are putting on satin. What should I do with the other one? Yeah, we're just, we're just putting on satin over this, and then we're going to stuff it. Um, I, it'll stay and make sure you have silicone or something because the hot glue will seep through the satin. The satin is so thin. So I am going to go ahead and glue down, um, about halfway 
and we'll leave this open here. We'll do the whole thing. We'll leave this open here and um, that's where we'll fill it. Okay. Again, I don't really want to, I don't want to stick the dowel too far in because satin will get, you can snag it and get a hole in it really easy. But I don't think we have much of a choice here. So I'm going to pull it in the center and then I'm going to see how it moved. See how it moved down there? I don't like this. Satin just, it has a mind of its own. You really, just gotta be patient with it. Okay, that was dumb. Also, as I just proved, just do a little bit at a time. Try not to do too much like I did, because I had to redo it. Now nobody's gonna see back here, so it doesn't have to be pretty, but you definitely want this um, heart shape at the top. Just because, I mean, I guess you don't have to have it, but I like it. So we're, gonna, so we're just gonna go down this whole way. This is a nice straight line. Make sure you're not pulling from this side. Just kind of get it over there. Whew. I'm telling you. It's so funny though, when I started making this, I'm just like, oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm doing this again, you know? <laughs> I swore I would never make any more of these. I just disliked them, but gosh, they sell so well. I'm telling you. And like I said, grandmas will buy multiples for all the granddaughters in their hair color and their skin tone and their favorite dress color. <laughs> so definitely. Um, put those options on your Etsy shop if you have them. But don't go and buy like yards and yards and yards of the fabrics. Just get a half a yard of um, a couple of skin tones and then a half a yard of each of the color. Like I said, we had red, yellow, black, and brown. And that pretty much covered everybody. So they could choose what color hair they want with what skin tone they want. And the skin tone was just um, pale, um, dark skin tone and darker skin tone. I just, I, I did it like that. So, um, okay, and I'm absolutely not trying to sound like I'm profiling here, but a pale would be considered a white child you know, but she could have red hair and be Irish and then they'd be really pale, right? Because that's Olivia with her Irish background. And um, dark skin tone was more so maybe um, Hispanic, you know, or may some, even some Asian have darker skin tones. And then we have the darker skin tone, which was more of your African-American, a little bit dark, not or, um, like Hawaiian, Filipino, um, more um, Islander. So they could pick which skin tone and you could have pictures of each one. You have to have pictures of each one. And then they could choose what color hair to go with it. So, I mean, I had one lady, both of her granddaughters had African-American skin, but blonde hair. They were in blue, the bluest eyes. God, they were gorgeous. They are gorgeous. They, I, I mean, I don't know if she still follows me or not, but oh my goodness. Oh, they, it was twins. They were gorgeous. But, you know, that way you allow them to choose what skin tone, what color hair, all of that. Because not every fairy princess is white. We know that. So this is really tight. Like this satin has no give to it. So you really need to do it very, very slowly, little piece at a time. And, you know, obviously use the dowel. There's no stretch whatsoever. And you don't want this to look like cottage cheese. So you want to make sure you're, you're pushing it in there tight enough that there aren't divots or dimples or anything. 
little bits at a time. Thankfully, this is the only, well, except for the wings. This is, oh, okay, never mind. The wings are all satin too. Never mind. I was trying to look on the bright side, but there's no bright side because there's more satin. And now listen, you guys don't even have to use satin. Their Hobby Lobby especially has some really cute, like whimsical, fun, unicorn type fabrics that are just um, mermaidy, you know, ir iridescent fabrics. Just, and that, uh, that lame that I used, that lame on the seahorse, that would be cute on here because they had a lavender, an aqua, and a white. We used it on the seahorse wings. I think it was lame. It was one of those. But though that would be super cute. So, you know, get, don't go down with the pink box only. You can look at the everyday fabrics from the Hoblob, and they have a lot of just kind of fun, lighter colors, pastel colors. The iridescent ones are my favorite. That's why that lame. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really sew the lame. I mean, I guess you could. I just never tried it. I, I have a feeling it would be as bad as the satin, if not worse. But you could try. But the, since this part of this is no sew, then you may not even have to sew it. But again, just be make sure you wear some silicone tips or something because the glue will definitely go through that as well. Okay, so now we're gonna close this up. I always start at the middle and just hold it over. I'm gonna burn myself here, I can already tell. There we go. I'm take my silicone, and just hold it on there. Move the silicone around. The silicone is very cool to touch. So you're cooling off that hot glue a lot faster when you use a little piece of silicone. And then cut these things off. Oops, well that didn't work. Let's try this one. All right. Okay, so there we have that little bodice piece. Now this is the center of the bodice. Now this white glittered fabric, I absolutely, you can barely see the glitter. It is a thick kind of, not rubbery, but it's a thick, thick fabric. I only have ever seen this at Walmart. And let me tell you, when I saw it that day, I bought the whole roll and I haven't seen it since. So I don't know if it's something they carry a lot of, but I just, I just like the look of the white glitter it sticks to everything but you could use a piece of glitter foam here as well if you have if you're doing the icy blue colors they have that really pretty icy blue glitter foam kind of like we do with the witches remember the center piece was a glued on piece of glitter foam so don't think you have to do fabric don't go run into all the walmarts trying to find it you can do white glitter foam if that's what you want to do because you're just gluing it on I pulled out the other fabric I had gotten from Walmart, the frozen um, fabric, and then I found this with it, so I went ahead and grabbed it, but I would have used a white glitter foam as well um, had, I, had I been thinking about it. But since I had this out, I just went ahead and used it. Remember, it doesn't always have to be fabric. Use all the different things that we use in this group um, we use lots of different things, so don't think if you can't find the color you like in one, um, then just go look, go look in another aisle and try to find something similar over there. Okay, so that's the center. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and decorate this because, you know, I want it to be ready when we go to glue everything on. Okay, so you will need a ruler for this part. Um, just... I like to, um, I want my um, ribbons to be even, so, so I'm just going to start I'm going to make a little mark. Now this is going to be covered by ribbon, okay, so I'm not too worried about it. So I go one inch down and then I go two inches each one. I don't think we need the bottom one though. 
I think we're gonna have our tulle skirt there. We may not need that bottom one. But just, I put it along that one inch down and then every two inches. And just making the slightest little mark with a pencil. So now I'm gonna take this and we're just going to put a little dot, tiny dot of glue at each little pencil mark. And then I like to just, because this is two-sided, and that might be important that you get a two-sided, meaning that it looks the same on both sides. Like this is not two-sided. It's sequins on one side and threads on the other. You want a two-sided, because I take it and I just fold it back on itself like that. And I'll actually put a little drop of glue right there and a drop of glue right there. And this little edge where I folded it back on itself is gonna be covered. So if you don't have a two-sided one, you can cut it and just do each one of these pieces, pieces individually. It's gonna be covered by the other trim. So it's not gonna make a huge, but if you have a, if you have one that has the same on both sides, it doesn't look different. You can just do like I'm doing and make a zigzag. We'll go ahead and do all the way down, even though I have a feeling this, this lower one will probably be covered. We'll see. I don't remember where the tulle skirt goes. Now I'm gonna cut this one and then we'll start again on this side. And it's important to measure them, guys. You don't want your little um, crisscrosses to be uneven. It, it, it's, like, it's like one of those things, like when a picture is hanging crooked, it's kind of the first thing you notice. Or, you know, some people, they go, oh, those are crooked. Now, I did one one time, and I made the whole thing and got it, and I had apparently measured two inches down and then did the two inches, and this one was just one inch down, so it basically put almost an entire inch off. I didn't even notice it until I was done making the whole body piece. So I'm like, holy moly. Thankfully, you just tear it right back up because, because it is covered by the other ribbon. Um anything any any fix I did to it was fine so you can see that looks cute right it looks like a little bodice very very much like our witch I know but this is the this is the pretty delicate girl <laughs> our witch was not our witch was a little hardcore <laughs> so see you can get a bodice like this and make a witch out of it and she can be like sexy and you know a little a little risque, and then you can just do pinks and suddenly it becomes a princess. Same thing, same pattern, same, you know, cinched up corset, whatever you want to call it. But because it's pink, now it's not risque. Kind of weird. Almost the same pattern, guys. Probably I may have even used the same you know, body piece. Though with the witch, because we use different types of fabrics, not satin, um, it held its shape, it didn't go cylindrical, and we were able to sew the bodice. With the satin, it wouldn't just keep its shape. So there we go. So that is the basis of the bodice. We will put some feather trim up here, but I don't want to do it yet. Okay, so before I do the wire on the legs, I need to seal these. I don't want to risk them when I'm messing with the wire. I'm just going to fray them more. So on this back part, I'm just going to try to get my fingers in there to glue it down. This will stop the fraying and um, keep the back of the shoe from lifting up. Okay, on the front we're going to put those little sequins. So I'm just doing this on the back so it doesn't continue to fray. Nobody's really gonna see the back of the foot, but that a little extra added detail that you put a back of the shoe, back of the slipper, it, I don't know, somebody might notice it, right? Like I said, I don't think it was 100% necessary, but now that I did it, it's fine. 
Okay, so I want to cover this up before I start messing with it because I really, really, really... Well, actually, I can go all the way up to there. That'd be cute. First, let's... Uh... Let's do... We're going to do our crisscross really quick on these, and then I'm going to do the sequins all the way up the side. Um, let's try it. That won't work either. Let's see. So if we cut this off straight. We're going to put some glue right here on the side of the foot, right above the front toes of the slipper. And we're going to go up. Ooh, do I have two? Up. Up. Now I'm just, I'm not gluing anything yet because I'm, I'm still playing with this to see if this is how I want to do this. Down. Yes. And then down right there. So I'm not going to take it off there because they're all perfectly where I want them. I'm just going to put some glue right there. And on the back side, I'm going to slip my nozzle up under these ribbons and glue them. Because um, I don't know how to look. It, I don't know if it's going to go through this trim and I don't want it to be an eyesore on the front. So for now, I'm just gluing the back. But look, that looks cute, right? Can you see it? Make sure those stay and those parts stay. So I don't think these front ones are going to move because I've glued both the places. <laughs> you can't even see it. I don't think the front ones are going to move at all because they're glued here and they're both glued in the back. So I don't think we have to add any glue on the front, which means there's no risk of us getting ugly glue yuck, you know, on the front of the shoe or the slipper, the slipper. So I want to put these, let's see. No, I don't like those. Okay, I'm, I mean, I don't like them up the side. I only want them on the toe. Like this. The thing that's great about working with these rows of just straight sequins is they curve around any... You know, you can make them curve easily. Whereas a flat trim, you would have um, bunching and sagging and just, it, it wouldn't look flush. But with sequins, they curve. Just doesn't stop you from getting hot glue everywhere. Because that. Come over here. So there's her little, you can see the sequence across the toe, which is just literally hiding the frayed area. And then the two little straps there. Okay, the same thing on this one. We're gonna put some glue right at the very edge of where the, the toe um, is sewn in here. So like right, right where the top of this, the toe piece is sewn in there. That's where I put that. And then you go around. And I want this to be about the same height as the other one. So I'm not going to glue anything until, see, look at, see how much, this one is a, a little bit higher. So. We definitely want to um, go a little higher with it. Just kind of work it around. You haven't glued anything down yet, so you can still work with it pretty easily. Oops. I love that. <laughs> okay, so I just completely undid it. 
All right, let's try this again. So we're going to go up. We're going to go up. We're going to go over. Oops. It's not looking right. Hold that. Okay, now it's way, way too high. So see, never glue it down until you're sure. Maybe if we, okay, so that's the problem. The first one's always so easy. Getting the second one to match, not so easy. So yeah, that looks right at the toe. And then we're gonna go up, go around, we're gonna, a little bit higher, a little bit, there we go. That's about as close as I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down. Before you glue the back side, you can still kind of wiggle them around with your fingers if you need to. But I feel like that is pretty close right there. They're pretty even. Okay, so now I'll put the sequins on. Okay, so now we have our little feet, and they look pretty good. Just like that. All right, now I have a mess here. So now we're going to put wire all the way down into the toe, because we want to be able to bend and make these legs. Now, some, some attachments, it does not matter, the legs, you don't want them to bend, like a nutcracker. Who sees, who's ever seen a nutcracker with a leg bent? You know, that's just not how they are, but with a, with a ballerina. Oh, I forgot to glue the back of this one. Hold on, let's do that before with a, this one. Let's do that before I move it, get it all moved out of place again. In fact, I think I kind of did here, hold on. There we go, oh, it's good. I almost forgot to glue this, that would have been disastrous. There we go, a little bit of glue. Just underneath those ribbons, not gluing the front, don't really need to. I think that's gonna hold it in place, no problem. So we'll let that cool, and this one. So we're gonna to try to get this down either the back of the leg or the center of the polyfill. Not always easy. Sometimes you really have to work it. Um, you just, you don't want it poking out the front of the foot. And this is why I went ahead and put the trims on because I knew I was gonna to have to grab down here and get this uh, wire pushed in. There we go. That wire is pushed in all the way to the toe. Um, we don't have to worry about folding this one in and making a nice crisp anything because it's going to be glued up inside the bodice. So basically I'm just flattening it out up here and putting some glue inside. And then cutting that off, okay? And let's do the same thing with this one. Just try to make it as straight as you can before you put it in. Now this is a 17 gauge wire. A 16 gauge would not bend or crease at all. It would go in very easily. Um, but just use what you have. Um, I just, like I said, I don't rec recommend using floral wire, any of them, not the 18, not the 20, nothing. You want, you need something that's actually going to hold that leg in place, unless you want to hot glue it in place. Like if you have the toe touch 
whatever part of this leg and you want to hot glue it there or even uh, put a pin in it or, or staple it or whatever you have to do, I don't care, but um, if the leg flops down and isn't strong, it, it's just going to look silly. Okay, what do we got now? Okay, so let's see. These are done. I'm going to cut a little bit off. We don't need that much length on them. I always like to just curve it over and then, um, you know, fold it back that way in shipping. It doesn't puncture anything. And it just gives the wreath maker something to attach to. And I think we're just going to go with what I had before, which was just a little bit of feather boa around the, the wrist area. It's just the easiest thing, but you guys can get creative however you like to make these little arms. So I'm going to cut this boa. I'm just guesstimating here. Feather boas, they cover a lot. <laughs> so they have a lot of, you know, if you're needing to cover an area, feather bow is a great way to do it because it will cover all of the area. Just holding it there. Okay. Now I'm just going to throw these to the side because these are basically done. Not much more you want to do with the arms unless you are going to make them, you know, longer and attach them somehow or near the shoulders so that the ballerina can look like her arms are up in the air. That's, um, like I said, I, I tried it and it just looked really awkward, but I did not have a wreath to put it in either. So these are what the little arms are going to look like. Okay. So they're really, there's really nothing much to those. So now We are going to take this bodice like this, and basically we're going to glue it onto that. And this is going to require some time to cool off because you don't want to mess with this. That's why I'm going to go ahead and glue it now. And on this one, we are going to, this, this pink piece here is the backing. We are definitely going to put a backing on this one. Not only is it going to look nicer, it's going to hold these legs on better. That makes, so they're going to, it's going to serve two purposes. So, I don't know if I can get this on there. Okay. All right, that's going to hold it, but we need to let that cool completely before we mess with it. We don't want those legs falling off. Okay, so what is next? Okay, what do we have in our little bag of tricks here? Basically, we are going to tie the jute on, or the tool onto this, and then this is going to be wrapped around her waist. Okay? And as you can see here, it's, and then we put this pretty um, sequin, same sequins that we've been using, same colors, around this. Now, we don't have tool on the back. I don't think we need tool on the back, but we have it all on the front, and it's a gut off. I think I used about 10 to 12 pieces. We'll find, we'll find out here. Okay. Get all my stuff. Okay. So I cut a bunch of them because I didn't want to spend time doing that, but this is a 12 inch roll. I got it at Hobby Lobby is $9.99. You can get it when the ribbons go half price. This goes half price. Okay. So, um, I like the 12 inch. If you do the six inch, you have to like bunch this up and somehow fold this on and it, it it's just it just makes more bulk and um, I unrolled this oops I made a mess here into about 16 inch pieces they're about 16 inches long so if this was the roll here um about 16 inches that, that just to me seemed good and then you take it just the way you cut it and you're going to do that scrunchy thing all the way up the center. Put that through. This is how I did it the other one. I just, I have a loop like that where I just put the pipe cleaner through. And I go in and I just put a dab of glue. And then I take the pipe and then I just 
hold it down on the pipe cleaner like that. Of course, in the other room, I have a lot more silicone, but we can use this one and just squeeze it like that. That little bitty dab of glue is going to go through all those layers of tool. So essentially, you have this, but you have no bulk up here. There's no big knot up there. So I like that. That's why I chose to do it that way. Okay, so I get another piece like that. Scrunch it up the center. Curl it over your finger. Make sure your, your lengths are equal. Pass the pipe cleaner through it. Now go into that loop that you haven't taken off your finger yet. Just put some glue in the top of it and then pull it down onto the pipe cleaner like that. And then I just take something and just squish it so that all that glue gets mixed into all that tool. Um, okay, so we used I used 10 of those 16 inch pieces and it's this bigger, this about this wide. And I know I'm running out of space here. This is just like my, my regular desk that I work at. <laughs> so I'm going to put the body towards me and what we're going to do, and you can see it's literally exactly as wide as this. Um, Lord, if I get it to hold still. But what I want to make sure is if the dress is hitting in the tool, the skirt is hitting in the right spot, and it is. I know it's covering up lots of the legs, but that's kind of what I was going for. Um, if you want yours to be shorter, you can. Um, I'm just going to do it just like that. Okay, I'm going to flip it over. And these aren't going to, I'm not going to be able to reach these to meet, so we're going to hot glue them. I'm just making sure they are even. Let's see, where's my ruler? It's hard for me to judge with all this tool. Okay, so that one is exactly two inches from the bottom. This one is, it's two inches from the bottom. Okay, it's even. So now we're covering this back here. So don't worry about it being a little bit of a mess. It's more important, ouch. More important that you don't burn yourself, throw your silicone on there, let it cool. Once we put the backing on this, like this pipe cleaner is not going anywhere, so. Okay, so that is on there. It is not going anywhere. So you can see this is what it looks like in the front. This is why I wanted it to be as close to the same length as possible. You don't, you don't really want a bunch of different lengths on it. So now we're going to put the little belt piece on there, which is this. Oh, I have a smaller piece. And I'm just going to cover the very top of the tool so it looks like, uh, you know, it's part of the dress here. So pull that down. I'm holding all the tool out of the way because it's going to come back and get me. And I'm just going to put a line or two of hot glue. Honestly, don't need too much. Right there. And we're going to do this one-handed before the glue dries. There. It's curling up. And then while the glue is still warm, just kind of maneuver your belt. If you don't use a sequin belt like this, whatever you're doing with ribbon or um, a type of trim, they have a really pretty sequin one like this that is like mermaid colors. It's blues and pinks and it's just really pretty. It's, every little piece of sequin is a different color and I really like it. I've when we made the mermaid last year, we used it on that. I'm pretty sure I still have some. That's why it made me think of it. 
because I still have some on the on my shelf upstairs. It's really pretty. Okay, so we got those. All right, so look, there is our bodice. Isn't it cute? Like, wouldn't you think that would be cute in a wreath with this big old tulle skirt sticking out? I think it'd be adorable. Now I'm going to put the feather boa across the top up here. And it's mostly because look at how ugly this is up here. Like the edges of the trim and this white thing not lining up. We just want to cover that. Remember, we want to cover anything that doesn't look pretty. Glue strings. Okay, so I'm just going to go right, right on the top. Kind of encompass that piece of tr top of that trim all the way to the little heart center there. And we're just going to set this on there. Okay, and then we will do the same thing over here. Glue right on the top, encompass that little end, end piece of that trim that's all jagged right there. And make sure this feather sticks to it just like that if you put it on the table just push the feathers down so that they get really good and stuck to that glue and now over the trash can cut off that piece of boa and make sure you pull pull all the little floofies off of it so that is really cute now the wire in there is pretty strong. You can do, you can pose the legs. So that if you want to pose them to stay forever, you're going to have to hot glue it where you want it. Okay. Or somehow pin it or tie it or do something. So now we're going to cover the back and then we're going to, we're going to put the pipe cleaner through the back. And this is just so, actually, you know what, we're going to do two. Because this is the scent, think about a wreath maker. This bodice part would most likely be in the center circle of a standard wreath frame. Um, always be thinking about what people are going to use. Therefore, in the center, they would either have to put it really low on the wreath frame or really high on the wreath frame. So if you do two pipe cleaners, one at the top and one at the bottom, then um, they have a better shot of hitting the lower ring with this one and the upper ring with this one, and it makes it very stable. So always, always, when you're making your attachments, be thinking about how on earth that wreath maker is going to attach it. And if 90% of the people use a regular wreath work form, then that's kind of what you need to um, focus to put your pipe cleaners in those areas. Some people use evergreens and like I said, some, and then you can put it anywhere, unique in the creek anywhere, but you don't, I mean, you have to think about, I think most people, I, I probably a good 75% of wreath makers probably use the work forms. It's just, it's just reality, right? That's just part of it. So, all right, so we have those in there and now we're just going to glue, glue, glue. Now guys, you have to remember too, the second I advertise these things and show my Derek's Designs group what we're making this month, I'm going to get orders for these. I, I mean, people are going to be contacting me wanting orders. So I hope, I, and of course, I'll wait. I will wait a couple of weeks before I advertise it. Um, I hope to goodness that some of you will make some of these because this is money. These are orders that are basically just being completely ignored. Um, it's been hard for me this past year. I've had every time we post something, people are like, oh my God, I love that. Can you make it? And I will refer them, you know, to our groups and nobody's making them. And, and it's not that you guys don't have them in your Etsy shops. I just don't know offhand you know, your Etsy, sh I'm not going to, I'm not going to promote a single Etsy address. I'm going to promote our designer showcase group. And if I don't see any in there, that is, 
a huge lost opportunity for someone to make them and make a sale. You know, um, just think, please think about that, you know, going forward with our wreaths. If this is something you truly want to do, and um, pretty much I advertise at least once a month what we're doing in the WAM group, you know, hey, look what we're doing in the WAM group kind of post on my Derrick's Designs page. I mean, somebody needs to be making the darn things or at least taking orders. You don't have to have them made and ready to ship, but you can say, well, I can take an order, um, you know, but give me, give me two weeks to make it. Night, I don't do it under two week turnaround. So, um, most people, you know, no problem waiting two weeks. If you, as long as you're taking their order. Also something as detailed as this, I mean, to me, this is a $75 attachment. This is not, this is not one of the inexpensive little $45, $50 ones. And this is this with all these pieces and all of this. And especially if you customize it, this is a $75 attachment all day long. Now, if you don't have a following and you don't, I mean, wreath, you may not have anybody that wants to pay that price. And if it's worth it to you, you know, you can give people a deal, but all this work, I don't know. I would say $75 in a heartbeat. Kind of the same as I did with the witches and the same as I did with the more elaborate Frankenstein. Um, this is just a lot of work. And the nutcracker that we're gonna do is a lot of work too. So don't, don't sell yourself short, but don't have the thing stuck in your shop for a year either if you can't afford that. You know, if you have to make a sale to make the money to be able to go buy more supplies, then make, you know, make the sale. Okay. I'm not going to look down on you for making a stinking sale. That's what this is all about. Um, you know, $65 in the pocket is better than $0. So if you can't get 75, give them a 10% discount. See how they jump on that. Now here, $75, but I'll give you a 10% discount. That's only $750 off. You're still making like $67.50 something like that. So, I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at. So, all right, look at our bodice is done. <sighs> yeah, I'm already tired, but we'll finish her. I know I knew this was going to be a long one and we still have the wings and we still have the rest of the head. I mean, this is, we're in for the long haul here. Okay. So hopefully you can fast forward through all of the mumbo jumbo and just get to the good stuff. Now I know we spent a lot of time in the beginning sewing, but you know, that's sewing. All right, so I am not going to do her face right now. I will do her eyes. But as I told you before, I wasn't really happy with the black pen. Um, which, honestly, it's not bad. Let me just say that. It's not bad. I am not, I mean, I, I would sell this. I would sell this. That's not, that's not the issue at all. But uh, I want to try, I like to try different things. I do like these eyes. Where's the other one? Oh Lord, there it is. Now these eyes do not come with eyelashes on them. I wanted them to be more 3D. But the thing that makes her the cutest is when you, you don't want the eyes close together, she looks nerdy. Princesses have very wide set large eyes. You know, look at any kind of Disney movie. <laughs> so, um, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this little lash, which I don't, I'm going to put glue on the edge of this eye and oh, that's a lot of glue. Tap it down just a little bit and then place the eyelash on it. And as I said, the human kind, well that it dried before I even had a chance. Jeez. I was talking too much. Okay. The human kind of eyelashes I feel like would be really cute on this too. Don't, I mean, don't think you can't. Um, I'm going to put the glue on this. Let's see if that makes it better. Right on the edge of the eyelash. And then just hold it on here. You can. And I'm just holding it on there. It's, it is, it is not perfect or really easy in any way to do that. It takes a lot of practice, honestly. 
But I like these. I love these little eyelashes. I think they're adorable. Um, I do try to thin out this little the base piece of it because it gets re it's really thick. And we'll put some glue on here. And I will just place it on this one. And you guys, it might be sure you print out several sets of these eyes and sometimes the glue destroys the eyelash so meaning the hot glue will just kind of melt it so be ready to throw a couple eyelashes away and start over so that it's clean and nice and then the eyes make sure you have several printed because if you mess one up you want to have be able to cut out another one you know right then you don't want to have to go run to the printer to print another one okay Okay, so that is what these eyes look like with the really long, like, flutter-by eyelashes. I don't mind them, but if all you have is the Dollar Tree ones, like the human kind, those will work, so no problem. Okay. Just, you just look at it and make sure they're kind of even. her little eyes. Now, I could get out my pen right now and make the little nose and make the mouth like this one, but I'm not going to. I'm going to try a couple little different things. Um, um, I'm going to probably do just, I probably won't do a nose at all. And the mouth, I may use like the little pink lips we did with the spider and make this line thinner um, and then put those little pink lips right there. Just little, not big ones, little bitty ones. Um, and I might even have her do the little side smile with a smirk. I haven't gotten that far yet, but just know that the face and stuff, you can, you can do this. Like I said, that is cute. Nobody would complain about that. It, there's nothing wrong with it. I am just wanting to try something else. Now I'm going to get out my little blush thing again. I have this light, light pink up here. I'm going to make cheeks. Now you can use, um, pink circles if you want to. I like blending the pink blush in though. Just be sure to blow it before you put it on the face. Otherwise you'll get a really dark circle. You might not even be able to see it on the camera, but I don't want it to be super dark. I just want her to have a little bit of blush on her cheeks. And this is just an e.l.f. blush palette that I got at Walmart. I think it was three bucks. It, it's cheap. It works. And I don't care if I, you know, use it up or anything. It's, it's, I don't wear blush, so don't bother me. I mean, unless I have to. Sometimes I have to, but so you can, you can just barely see the rosy cheeks on there. Sam, it's not, it's not big, but it's there. All righty. All right, so she needs a crown because she is a princess. This is just pink glitter foam. This is a spare piece of tool that I had. Um, here, let me just dump this because I'm probably going to use all the good stuff. And then I just picked, I have, you know, drawers of gemstones. I just picked a bunch of them that were pink. Now these two, I'm pretty sure this one and this one and this one, and this one go to the, um, the wings. So I'm going to set those aside. All right, and you can decorate your little crown however you want. Don't, don't think this is it, okay? So I just put a bunch of little gemstones on there. And they're all pink. Everything was just black pink. But um, for this particular princess, I wanted her to be all pink. how cute she is. You can see her up close. Little tool, little, all the gemstones. Um, think of just a, a silly little nose and a, li um, a little mouth maybe with a little, maybe little pink lips. We're going to try it. 
before I finish it, okay? So don't be surprised, our little head is blank. <laughs> I love the eyes though. I'm also, I do like the eyes. I just don't really care for how I did the mouth. Okay, so last piece and oh my goodness, we were almost done. Oh, okay. All right, so you can make these wings as complicated as you want. You can glue them onto the back of the doll or you can have them as an entire separate entity. Um, these are all things that you can figure out once you, you know, get it done. Um, I'm using poster board, the same thing I use to draw my patterns onto, because you want them to be slightly flexible so they don't break, especially when you ship them. If you put hot glue on this, you're going to see every little line, every little wiggle. It, it's just ugly. So you guys ask me all the time where I get this Walmart in the children's craft section. All we're gonna, all it's gonna do is create a nice flat area to glue this satin to that's not gonna create any lumps or bumps or wrinkles or anything, okay? It's the same glue stick we use for our top hats so that they come out nice and flat. See how, oops, oh gosh. Nice and flat, that did not get flat. And the great thing about the glue stick, it doesn't dry right away. So, and, and when it does dry, it's not like a perfect, guys, if you've ever used a regular glue stick, it's not going to be a perfect seal the whole time. You're still, I still always put a bead of glue around the edge, but it's going to be hidden by the, um, oh shoot, it's way over there. It's going to be hidden by the trims we put over it. I put pipe cleaners on them. I put two of them because initially I was going to glue this to the back of the doll. And I was, you know, I was going to stop the trims so that she would fit right in here and I was going to glue it to her. But then I wasn't sure if you want to sell this as a fairy princess or you could just sell it as a ballerina princess and not do the wings at all. So I wanted to give you that option. I didn't want to just glue it and tell you you had to because you don't. You don't You don't have to put the wings on at all. Um, a ballerina princess maybe doesn't have wings. I don't know. So anyway, so that is up to you. But this is how I made it. I use the same, same trims, same satin, same everything's, but all ties together. Ugh, yuck. Okay. And we're going easy here. It doesn't really matter. If you, if you glue this to the bodice, then it won't matter if it's, uh, got felt or satin or whatever. Oh, shoot. It is, it is so squirrely. There we go. All right. Flip it around. Now, oops, let's grab her again. If you do decide to glue it to the bodice, it will fit between those pipe cleaners. You won't need to put pipe cleaners on it, okay? See how it's gonna fit right between it and you can eliminate these ones. So if you're gonna glue it on there, don't worry about the pipe cleaners being in the way. And like I said, you can just not even bother to put those in. Oh shoot, I did it again. Okay, so ah. so now, because I can see through this satin, I can easily come in here and cut this off. Normally, if this was felt, you couldn't do this. You would have to cut each layer, but this is satin. It's so thin. I can see right there. All right, so we're just what we're gonna do is just put some glue. We're going to cover around this edge so you can have a line of glue. It will just, it will keep things from sliding around. It will make it much easier to cut this excess fabric off. Because fighting with it, I'm over it. Just throw a line of glue around the edge. There we go. 
I was going to do this anyway after I cut it, but it wanted to fight with me so much that I just decided we'll do it now. And because the, the glue stick doesn't dry, it's not, you know, it'll harden up by tomorrow, but it's not dry like really fast. You can still keep pulling it off. It's no big deal. But over, quickly do the same thing. Now we're just going to throw some cute little trims on just to cover all this mess that I just created. And again, I'm using the trims that we used earlier just to have it cohesive. And oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm going to cut this instead of letting it go because if you're going to glue this to the back, which I'm going to do with this one, you don't need to run the trim. It, it'll just be bulky and get in the way. So I'm just going to cut it there. Um, let's see. Let's grab this little, little chickadee and see. I should probably have done this and drawn a line or something first, but we're going to make it work. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fine. So as long as I go just as deep on that side, it'll be okay. So this one, I did not put pipe cleaners in it because I do intend to glue it to the back of the other one. Okay, that was done intentionally. So now we'll finish this off. And I, you can get more elaborate with these wings too, Lord. You can use netting. If you want to go through the effort of like lining them with, uh, uh, what you call it, wire, you know, putting wire in the edges and sewing them and all that, more power to you. Whew. I've done my share of that, you know. I would rather buy a cute little Halloween costume that comes with a little set of kids set of wings than put myself through all that again. There are just some things that are truly better to just buy than it is to make, okay? And little knit wings, butterfly wings that um it's just so much easier. But now fabric wings like this, you know, they're not too bad to make. But gosh, the net ones, no thank you. No thank you. No, no, no. Was that zero out of ten? Do not recommend. Heck no. Forget it. All right, so I'm using this other trim because I'm just trying to pull in a different color. I don't want to do the same trim all the way around. So for me, I just, it's the same trim we used on the bodice. So, again, keeping it cohesive. Turn around. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this and your color combinations and all the cute things you do. Um, you can make her like a little garden princess and do her like a little crown of flowers and then make her wings <coughs> more like well, like a garden princess with, you know, leaves and flowers and, you know, where she's not a ballerina. Or she could still be a ballerina and be a garden princess. I don't know. I don't know. The little, the little garden princesses are always cute. The ones that like live with the gnomes, you know. I guess they live with the gnomes. I don't know where they live. I shouldn't say that. I don't know where they live, but it's cute. I love all the, when you put all the cute little tiny flowers. Now my princess that I had done before had a flower crown. Um, and she was really cute. 
Okay, so now we need a gemstones. I forgot about those. You can get more. I did not get very elaborate with these, and you know, I probably should have spent a little more time, but I don't know what to do with this stuff. This stuff. I know I don't keep all the, I just throw it away because I can't keep scraps. It'll drive me crazy. Um, if it's a big scrap that I can do something with, yes, but if it's just 12 inches of some kind of trim, I gotta throw it away. I'll buy more. I have, if I kept every little scrap, my God, I would, I'd have to move out. Especially felt, if I kept every scrap of felt, oh my gosh, there's no way. Okay, so this is just pretty basic, right? It's just a couple of gemstones. They tie in with the gemstones on the crown. That's it. I mean, I'm not doing anything else with it. That is it. So I'm going to grab her, open up her pipe cleaners, pull down her skirt. She's, she's difficult. Okay, so we don't need this glue stick anymore, so I'm going to cover it up. you got to be sure to cover these. They do dry out. Didn't know that. <laughs> I left one open overnight, and the whole edge of it was just crusty. So, makes sense, but... Okay, so I just want to peek at it and make sure it's, make sure it's centered. Okay, so now I'm going to throw some globs of glue here because it's going to require a few good globs. you guys this has been a long one wow but there's a lot of info here and hopefully you can fast forward over the areas that you're good with and just watch the things that you you know need direction with all right okay so you can always go back and add more glue that side looks fine this side up oh, a little bit at the top here it's kind of coming loose all right there we go There she is, look at her, with her little wings attached. Again, totally optional, you don't even have to do wings. And then her little ballet slippers down here. Wow, she is adorable. And then her little face, which um, after I finish the face and I, you know, after you guys get the pattern and all that, I will show you what I did with the face, okay? All right guys, that's it. I know it was a long one. Thank you so much for hanging in and doing all the things. But like I said, just do it in little pieces, little parts maybe. And maybe, you know, it won't be two and a half hours of, of all of this, but um, it's some good information on this. And I think, you know, it, it behooves you to, um, you know, to listen and learn all the little tips and, trips, tips and tricks that I try to give you, okay? So um, this was a big one, but she's adorable. I love her. And I, ju I just know people are going to want this. I just know they are. So um, plan on making one or two. If you don't like satin, you heard me cuss over the satin. Don't use satin. Find another fabric. It doesn't have to be satin. Okay. So ballerina, I just assume satin. But it doesn't have to be. Find your own pattern. Find your own fabric. I mean, see what you like. So, okay, guys, you have a fantastic night. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.